In my previous video, we explored one instance of the planet series, which is likely to be an easy box. If you have not yet watched that video yet, click the I button now. In this video, we are going to penetrate another VM instance of this same series. Mercury is an easy box though you will likely capture the flag and be on the harder side of easy, depending on your experience. Click on the mirror download link and download the OVA file. You can easily set up the server to VirtualBox, simply click on import and then import the file. It will automatically initiate an instance. Once you are done with these, click on setting and change the network adapter to the host only adapter. Once you are done with these, start them. Enumeration the instances are ready and we are on Kali Linux. Let's find out the IP address of the Mercury server by using NetDiscover. Run NetDiscover-i and then specify the network adapter name that is ETH1. We have discovered an IP address, so let's perform a network scan to detect what ports are open, which is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous nmap tool, where hyphen sc performs a script scan using the default set of scripts. Hyphen sv enables version detection, which will detect what versions are running on what port. From the network scan, we have spotted two open ports. Port 22 TCP running an SSH service. This means that if you have a username and password then will be easy to gain a login into the server. Port 8080 TCP runs an HTTP service, which indicates that there might be a website running. To look at the contents ourselves, we can open a web browser of our choice and navigate to the target's IP address along with the port 8080 in the URL bar at the top of the window. This might be in the developing stage and there is nothing to enumerate on the web page. There might be any hidden or hardly accessible directories and pages and that can be done through directory busting. Run gobuster dir u and specify the URL of the website hyphen w and specify the path of word lists. Where dir is used to specify directory and file enumeration mode. Hyphen u to specify the target URL and hyphen w to specify the path to the word list. As a result of directory busting, we obtained an important file that is robots.txt. Let's dig into this directory and find out if there is any sensitive information that might help us in Foothold. Foothold After analyzing the robots.txt file, we have finalized that there is an error page, which can be accessed through an asterisk. This error page may be indicated in another directory. So, let's access the identified folder Mercury Facts on the browser. On accessing the Mercury Facts directory, we found a hyperlink consisting of a fact. So, now, click on Load a Fact. It will redirect to an another page. By checking the URL, we conclude that there is a variable ID that is responsible for all these. We could test it to see if it's SQL injectable, but instead of doing it manually, we will use a tool called SQL Map. SQL Map comes pre-install with Kali Linux. So you no need to install it again. 
Now open your terminal and type SQL map hyphen U and then specify the link. There will be some questions that the tool will ask you. You can respond with yes or no, or just by pressing enter for the default answer. After analyzing the output, we confirm that this server is vulnerable to SQL injection flaws and is in a critical stage, but SQL injection is not possible to ID parameter. So next time when we perform the SQL map command we remove the ID part and try it again. Let's list information about the existing databases. So firstly, we have to enter the web URL that we want to check along with the hyphen U parameter. Now typically, we would want to test whether it is possible to gain access to a database. So we use the hyphen hyphen DBS option to do so. Hyphen hyphen DBS lists all the available databases. Hyphen hyphen batch is used to never ask for user input, use the default behavior. This application will tell you that it has identified the database and ask whether you want to test other database types. You can go ahead and type Y. Further, it may ask whether you want to test other parameters for vulnerabilities, type Y over here as we want to thoroughly test the web application. The output shows us that there are two available databases. We observe that there are two databases, Information Schema and Mercury. Now, list information about tables present in a particular database. To try and access any of the databases, we have to slightly modify our command. We now use hyphen D to specify the name of the database that we wish to access, and once we have access to the database, we would want to see whether we can dump all DBMS databases tables entries. For this, we use the hyphen hyphen dump all query. From the output, we have got a few usernames and passwords. As we already know, there is an SSH service is running on port 21. Let's perform a secure shell connection to enable secure remote connections using these usernames and their relevant passwords. Let's test these credentials one by one. After attempting these credentials, we successfully authenticated and got a secure shell. As it's depicted now, we have accessed the user webmaster. Next, use the ls command to list the files and the directory's contents. As a result, we found user flag.txt, open this using the cat command. After the login, we got our first flag in the same directory. Since this is not the root user, Let's identify further information about the target machine, which could be useful for gaining root access. Privilege escalation. Let's identify the rights and privileges of the current user by executing the sudo hyphen l command. It will prompt you to input the password of the webmaster. But we got an output, which means the user Mercury doesn't have permission to run the sudo command. After analyzing, we have discovered a directory that may contain some sensitive information. Let's change the directory to the Mercury Project directory. Now run the ls command to list the files and directories. There is a text file, let's see what is there in this file. Open this file with the cat command. This file contains some login strings that seem to be a base64 encoded strings. We use the echo command to decode the base64 string. After successful decode these strings, we found a clear text password for the user Linux master. Let us log in into the target machine using the user Linux master. Open a new terminal and type the following command.
It will prompt you to input the password for Linux Master. The login was successful, and now we are logged in as users Linux Master. Now, again run sudo -l to identify the rights and privileges of the current user Linux Master. There is a file that contains the root permission to the slash user slash bin slash check syslog.sh. This means the current user owns sudo rights for the check syslog.sh bash script. This is a part of the local privilege escalation. Let's use this file to escalate current user privilege to root. Firstly read the contents of the bash script. The script was written to execute the tail program for reading the last 10 syslog entries. As we know the check syslog.sh could be run in the preserve environment which means we can abuse the environment path variable. So, we tried to create a hard link or a symbolic link to an existing file or directory to the specified target using the vi text editor. This could be done using the following commands. Now export the local variable using this command. Once, you will execute the above command, further, you need to execute the following command that will execute check syslog.sh. In a preserve the environment which will link VI editor to the tail program and open the syslog.sh script in VI editor mode. On execution of this command, I got a prompt from the VI text editor. Now execute the semicolon and specify the bash path and hit enter to get a root shell. You can verify it by running the id command. You can find out the root flag by changing the directory to root. Read this root flag using the cat command. Congratulates! We have successfully captured the flags of the planet's Mercury VM instance. If you have any doubts or queries then write me a comment in my comment section.